everyone, welcome back! For this MOOC, we wanted to offer you the best advice possible to help you prepare for any radio interviews you may have. We're really fortunate to have with us Catherine de Copé, who agreed to be interviewed for this MOOC. Catherine has been a journalist for 15 years and currently covers the area of science, education, history and digital technology. Along with reports and radio programs, she has produced about 15 audio documentaries for the French public radio France Culture. She has just produced one about the first TV broadcast between the US and France in 1962. She recently self-produced a podcast about the native language called in French Retour à la langue which is widely available on all streaming platforms. She has also worked for the French press and has written nine fiction books for young readers. She just written a little book of experiments on biodiversity published by Milan. So, Catherine, thank you again for being a part of this MOOC. There are several possibilities. Either the program is a feature program, it is the program dedicated to a specific topic, or it's a news program. Interviews in a news program are usually very short, much shorter than in a feature program. In both cases, you will either be speaking to journalists who are used to interviewing researchers or to more mainstream journalists. This is often the case when the program is not specifically about science or when its topic of the day is not directly related to your field of research. For example, a general public program on everyday life invites a neurologist and a business coach to discuss the issue of stress in the broadest sense. Another example could be a news interview in which a doctor who specializes in smoking is invited in response to a recent government announcement on youth addiction. Here, it's logical to expect a higher degree of simplification. If the interview is live, there'll be no editing, but expect the time to fly by very quickly, especially if you are on a special feature when there are several guests. It's really important to remember that radio hates silence, and in order to keep listeners' attention, it is common to punctuate programs by inserting reports, musical breaks, archives, commercials, etc. All of which are, let's face it, interruptions. Don't hesitate to tell the journalist or the host beforehand which topics you are most comfortable talking about. This will help them to interview you on the subjects you know best and to identify you from other potential guests. Now, let's look at another approach. Let's say you are interviewed before the broadcast. Well, in this case, there's bound to be some editing. The objective is to make what you say sound more effective and also to tie it to other elements. These can be interviews, other interviews, background sounds, a soundtrack, etc. And all these elements are chosen by the journalist or the editor to build up to a statement or to tell a story. The final result is that your words are inserted either into a report or into a longer program. This could be a documentary or a creative piece. These are really time-consuming radio formats, so you should feel free to expand on your answers and even rephrase them. Because in the end, they will be edited. But always make sure you are as clear as possible. Now, it's important to keep in mind that when editing, you may be dealing with a journalist alone are assisted by a sound engineer or even an editor, but a team of three people is pretty much the maximum. Well, for one thing, there's no need for makeup, but then again, if you go to the studio, you need to be aware that more and more radio stations make videos and take photos for their websites, so you might be filmed too. So be ready for that. In terms of content, Radio, by definition, cannot use images to illustrate what you're saying. You must therefore adapt your speech, thinking that you're addressing a blind person or someone who's never seen a researcher in context, 
and ask yourself the following questions beforehand. What concrete details will enable the listener to immediately imagine what I'm saying? Is there an image or analogy that could help them understand the experiment I am explaining? Have I thought of talking about or describing the tools I use for my work? Feel free to give examples from everyday life that relate to your research. And finally, if you think what you say could be associated with a specific sound, a lab environment, animal recordings, past recordings they may have, don't hesitate to point this out to the journalist. It may really help them in the editing process to put things better into context. Well, first and foremost, it's really important to speak as clearly as possible. Not too fast and finish the sentences you've started. Otherwise, the editing is very difficult. And I know this may seem obvious, but don't forget to breathe. Believe it or not, the listeners can hear when we're nervous. If you're being interviewed on the phone, make an extra effort to articulate. Second, and this might be difficult for some of you, please keep your answers short. This way, the journalist can direct you to what interests them more specifically, or so that any other guest can easily react to what you've just said. Don't hesitate to explain the specific terms or jargon. And one more thing, if the interview is not live, don't get too comfortable. It's better to repeat yourself than to hesitate because you'll be doing the journalist a huge favor by making the editing phase easier. Like I said, that process is extremely time consuming. So if you can give them some perfect sound bites in one shot, they will love you for it and it will increase your chances of getting invited back again in the future. Well, first be sure to ask what type of program it will be. Do this before the interview and, if possible, as soon as the journalist makes an appointment with you. That way, you have the time to prepare. Try to listen to at least one broadcast of the program you've been invited to, to get an idea of, of how it will be run, how it will be organized and its style. This will avoid any unpleasant surprises. Don't forget to ask, if the journalist hasn't already told you, how long the interview will last when it's broadcast. As you can imagine, the shorter it is, the more you'll have to shorten what you will say. So come to your conclusion quickly. Once you know these details, all you have to do is concentrate on the few essential talking points, which are supported as much as possible with examples. You can take a few notes, but don't write everything down. Above all, avoid reading once you are at the microphone. This can create a certain distance with the audience that can be heard on the air. And finally, remember that you'll have to sacrifice the extreme scientific precision that many researchers are used to for the sake of clarity. One typical mistake is to cite all the authors of a study or a book to avoid offending that specialist community. As a compromise, you can get away with citing the institution that hosted the research or the lead scientist or the main author of the paper, for example. Well, I would first say that they accept to be guided in the moment. They maintain a certain spontaneity and they answer the question that was asked. They are also able to talk about their individual research experience, but they add a personal touch by mentioning any surprises, sensations or obstacles they overcame. These all help keep the listener's attention. And a second important point is they're not afraid to challenge common beliefs. And finally, they can quickly find everyday examples or images to clarify a result or a scientific fact. For example, comparing the surface of the planet Mars to the skin of a face to explain its deformations. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you.